Yeah, like even the guys who were on a hot streak like Costa and just melting under pressure, mm -hmm. some of them, it's, you know, definitely seems like even at the highest level with the most confident of individuals, they might just fucking like crack under the pressure he's a funny guy like he's leaning into this whole secret juice thing like yeah he carries around hilarious his jug that says secret juice on it yeah. do you think that he's on something or do you think he's just like uh like very extraordinary genetics uh that's the thing is like i did a whole like deep dive video on what i think he could be doing and i think like for any individual that doesn't pass the the eye test, like he would definitely be one of those individuals. But like I wouldn't boil it down to that. He could be a hyper outlier individual for sure. Um, and I wouldn't want to ever say like a definitive statement. But I think if there was ever a person, maybe not if there was ever a person, but um, I think it's highly probable that he's done certain things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like even when he went into the the Ultimate Fighter, uh, what is the show called again? Like the ultimate fighter, yeah, the ultimate, yeah, secret juice. Yeah, he like yeah. went in as like a self proclaimed bodybuilder from Brazil, and he's just like his physique very much represented what you would expect. And his performance is only like obviously he was like a more of a newbie back then, but um, yeah, even outside of myself, like highly respected individuals like Faraz Sahabi also believes he's on gear or has yeah. done certain things. And um, yeah, it's uh. You know, you can never say for certain if they're passing tests, obviously, but a lot of finicky shit sometimes goes into when they're testing out of the country, um, you know, politics, corruption, et cetera. Yes. I didn't know um, how I, – I wouldn't say there's a lack of comprehension in the uh, comprehensiveness in the USADA test, but they're they're not bulletproof. Yeah. It's, it's not that they're not trying. It's like they only have so much – well, I guess, like, who – Who's interpreting that? Some people might say otherwise, but it is budget restricted. So you can only do so much testing on every fighter. And then sometimes their choice of who's being tested, though, is definitely a little bit iffy. Like there was uh, the the light heavy guy. I think it was uh, Jiri or what's his name? Um, Yuri Prohaska. Yeah, he was tested like yeah. 50, 51 times. Yeah. And then if you looked at like a Dillashaw, he was tested like nine times or something, yeah. which is just like, why? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why has he tested less? Yeah, like some of the most pop, pop. premier suspect guys you were tested like single digit times and this other guy somehow has like half of USADA's fucking budget allocated to him. Like right. I, I get that he was new in the actual sport, like he was coming from I forgot where he came from exactly. Well he was not new in MMA, he no, just no, no. wasn't fighting. New to the UFC, I mean, right? Uh, yeah. So the I, the idea that some people have put out is they needed to establish more of a comprehensive passport on him quicker so that he had more elaborate testing off the jump than Look at that though. That's so nuts. Yeah, it was a really He's so much more tested than anyone else. Yeah. It was like a wild disparity. Wild. Rose Namajunas got tested more than Paulo Costa. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. Neil Magny got tested more than Paulo Costa. That is nuts. And for for Dillashaw only getting single digit tests, it was like yeah, it it just very much brought into question like were they hoping he'd have more leeway in order to not have like like give him the opportunity to actually have a good fight when he's right. coming back sort of thing like there's a lot of speculation obviously you couldn't say one way or another what actually is going on and they're very tight-lipped about like they don't reveal test results anymore like they used to back in the day you could actually get like john jones fucking urine analysis and interpret it yourself and like see what's going on whereas now it's like if a guy pops or whatever like it's very you know you can't really get insight onto what their decision making process is like even when asked about connor they were very very vague in their answer mm. it was very much just like this is what the rule set is for getting in and out of the pool and the testing window that you need to be subject to in order to be qualified to fight again and that's it we're, we're not going to speak on any individual fighter or what has happened with them or not happened with them etc i blame you <laughs> i do <laughs> when you covered the john jones situation uh, like that was very illuminating to me i was like oh yeah. Okay, and then you were talking about uh, the test levels and the epitestosterone epi to testosterone ratio, and how it was all off, yeah. and n all of these points seem to indicate that someone who is supplementing with exogenous hormones. Yeah, it was like a pretty comprehensive, like picture that is hard to dispute with all the evidence presented. Like, yeah, like you couldn't be like, oh, for fucking sure, but like. Right. 
it's pretty hard to refute like what has been put in front of our face with the positive test results and all the other background context. Yeah, and it's also a guy who, you know, it's a wild dude. Yeah, he's d- doing a lot of wild shit. He's doing coke. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not like his body's a temple. Yeah, you know. What do you think about his comeback? Interesting. Yeah. If anybody wanted to get bigger and get taken out of the pool, I would have thought John did it. I mean, that would be the move. You know. Yeah. Get super saucy. Take- I wonder if he saw the situation and was like, "Fuck." Yeah, <laughs> probably, because he's he's trying to come back naturally. But he's fucking big as shit now. He's yeah. like two fifty five, two sixty now. The question is, that's a lot of time off. But if Francis and Gano versus John Jones is the big fight, well, Francis has had to take a lot of time off as well because Francis had a torn MCL and ACL, had to get surgery, reconstructed his leg, um, rehabilitated it, out for over a year. So that, to me, is very interesting. I like that fight because Francis has had a lot of time off. John's had a lot of time off. And, you know, it's commensurate, at least close. I mean, obviously, Francis has been more active recently. But at least that time off makes sense to me. And it's a very compelling fight. And I think John, his his background, his resume does warrant an immediate shot at the title. He is absolutely one of the greatest fighters of all time. No ifs, ands, or buts. And him stepping up from light heavyweight, relinquishing the title, voluntarily saying, I'm done with this. I'm going to move up to heavyweight and be the heavyweight champ. And then building himself legitimately into a heavyweight and then documenting it all. Showing all the deadlifts, showing all the squats, showing put on size and put on some body, body fat, uh, that's compelling. What do you foresee as, if it happened, what would be your prediction? Well, the grappling of John Jones is very difficult to deal with. I mean, for a guy like Francis Ngannou, who uh, was primarily a striker and was taken down on multiple occasions by Stipe Miocic and really dominated in their first fight, the, the question is, has Francis gotten better at grappling? Well, he definitely has because he beat Cyril Gaon with grappling. He That was the fight that he fought with his blown out leg. Mm-hmm. And he fought Cyril Gaon, who is a fucking phenomenal striker. I don't know if you saw Cyril Gaon versus yeah. Tai Tuivasa. Yeah. Holy shit, is Cyril Gaon good. He's so technical, so smooth, and his combinations are since. And Francis beat him with his grappling. So Francis is grappling, even with a fucked up leg, has gotten a lot better, but hasn't got to John Jones levels. That's the big question, because John is, I mean, John took down Daniel Cormier, who's an Olympic wrestler. Mm-hmm. I mean, John's a fucking monster when yeah. it comes to grappling. 